Hello and welcome back to another episode of this video series in which we are installing all the desktop environments that are officially supported on Arch Linux. And for that we are using the desktop environment to wiki page. And if we go down here to the officially supported list, you can see that we are going through this list in alphabetical order. And last time we looked at GNOME. So this time we are going to take a look at GNOME Flashback, which is basically a version of GNOME that is more like the classical look. If you check out the GNOME Flashback uh, project site, you can see this uh, screenshot here. So this is a uh, kind of a more uh, classical kind of look, which I think you can set GNOME to look like this. And in the last episode, we did a lot of modifications to GNOME with some of the uh, things that are available for the GNOME extensions and uh, things like that. But in general, the GNOME flashback is going to just give you that look. And actually, if you just install the GNOME group, you will have the GNOME flashback or GNOME classic, or I, I don't remember how it's, I think it's called GNOME flashback there, but you will have to, you will have that uh, installed if you install everything from the GNOME group and you can uh, log into this uh, flashback but we can also just try to install the GNOME Flashback itself because if you don't want to use the full GNOME, only the GNOME Flashback style of the GNOME desktop, then I guess this is going to be for you. And so if we check out the package page for uh, GNOME Flashback here, if I might increase the size here, so we will see that it will have a few dependencies but I don't see either the file manager or the terminal in here. Well, it has at least the uh, settings for, uh, I guess, the panel and uh, the GNOME settings daemon, but it also does not have the GNOME control center, which is, um, I guess we will have to install that manually if we want that. So let's uh, jump into it and let's go to a terminal and install the suggested gnome-flashback package. So sudo pacman-s gnome-flashback and let's see if I type it correctly and please work. <laughs> yeah, so I will install it, all these things. So I will be back once it's done and I am logged in to the GNOME flashback session. All right, so I am in the GNOME flashback mode, which was, the session was called GNOME flashback uh, Metacity. And if I hide my camera here for a moment, you can see that we have the, uh, what is this? The workspace switcher there. So there is a places menu from which we can open a file manager and you can see like if I switch to another workspace, it actually switches workspaces. So that is nice. On the left hand corner in the bottom, we have this small icon which will hide every uh, window to show the desktop. And there is the application menu on the left hand side. And we don't really have much here. And you can see we have the Qt browser, of course, which was already installed on our system and Vim, but we also have files installed. So even though I did not see it in the uh, dependency list, the files, which is Nautilus for GNOME, has been installed. We have the switch user, logout, lock screen, and the suspend menu here on the right hand side. We can also check the calendar, the, what is it, sound settings, and um, the connections. And I guess, does the lock screen work? Well, it actually works. For some weird reason, it works here. Very nice. So, as you can see, we don't have uh, much here. And if I, so maybe I shouldn't just open a cute browser from here. I can actually, I tried, I can run the simple terminal if I uh, find the binary in the file manager and double click it. But instead of doing that, let's uh, go back to DWM and uh, install a few other things before we take a further look to this system because as you can see there's not much here so let's uh, let's go and do that so as we saw here in the package description 
we might want to install the GNOME control center and uh, the wiki also suggests to install the GNOME applets for the small applications for the GNOME panel, I guess. So let's uh, do that, sudo pacman-s gnome-control center and the gnome applets, I guess. What am I spelling this correctly? gnome-applets and gnome-control center. So these will be the two things we are going to add here. And let's uh, hope that I typed these correctly this time. I mean, this is first time trying and it works. So dependency cycle detected doesn't matter. So let's install all these things. And in the meantime, I'd like to tell you that now that I installed the GNOME flashback package in my, uh, what is it, the login manager, the regular GNOME session also appears, but I don't think that would work to launch, but maybe I will try and tell you. But let's uh, log out and log in GNOME. All right, so we have installed the things we wanted to install, which uh, I just forgot that maybe I should have installed the GNOME terminal too, so I don't have to go back to DWM to install other things. But now we have the settings menu. This settings menu, it looks to me the same as it is on the regular GNOME. How do I resize the window? That's, I, that's something I, okay, so I have to be very careful where I can grab this to resize this window. All right, so just like in GNOME, I think it is the very same settings. Yeah, it should be the very same setting as application, but in the outside, we can see that we have minimize and we have maximize buttons over there, which I don't think we had in regular GNOME. So that's the difference. In the appearance, we can set a dark theme the system uh, installed backgrounds here you can choose from them if you want to and i guess you can add your custom pictures if you are not satisfied with the ones that are installed on your system i maybe let's uh, switch to this blue one and what else can we do so that's not much to <laughs> customize our desktop of course but that's what we have here and uh, what else? We have keyboard settings. So all th these things are very much the same as we had in GNOME, of course. So if you want to customize how the window tiling works, for example, this is the place to do it. And I guess, um, yeah, you could uh, maximize window horizontally, maximize window vertically maximize window. So those are kind of the settings you have very much the same as in GNOME. And what I want to see is what can I customize here? The right hand cl click or right click on these does not seem to work, but now I have a settings here. So what do I do if I say settings? It just opens the same settings menu. And I just kind of noticing that these bars they do not follow the dark theme set in this appearance menu. So I wonder what else. Okay, the file manager, for example, it follows. So I guess this is something that these panels are not GTK4, I guess. That might be the issue we are having here. But in any case, uh, let's uh, try to find the settings for these panels. How do I change the settings for these panels. Do I not change them? I mean, notifications, that's not going to be that. Multitasking, oh no, don't crash on me. So the GNOME control center did not just crash on me, it is also <laughs> refusing to start after this incident. So maybe we should follow the suggestions of the Arch Wiki and even if we just want to use this, unless of course you are really willing to dig into what's going on with the motor settings here, or I guess which you could get into to figure this out. But we can just be very uh, easy on this and just install the 
whole GNOME package, or at least, or not package, the group, or at least we can take a look at the GNOME group, maybe sudo pacman s gnome, and let's see if it will give us anything that's kind of uh, useful here. So maybe we want to install motor, but I don't think it's not installed. So if I press 48 for, for motor, which is here. Oh, maybe it was not installed. That would be very interesting if <laughs> motor was not installed and this was what crashed the uh, GNOME desktop or GNOME settings control center or whatever. But it does not seem to want to start. Oh, now the org gnome shell app switcher is being missed here. So you can see that for some reason, <laughs> the first time I started it, it worked, but I clicked on some of the settings panel, which seems like have not uh, been prepared to work without some of the uh, things on it. So maybe I will have to just install everything from GNOME. Of course, you might want to figure out which might <laughs> relate to the app switcher, but honestly, I have no idea. And maybe it will be a good thing to have a few things from here installed anyways. So I guess... Uh, we can select all and of course you could uh, pick and choose from this if you want. I mean, for example, the, uh, what is it? GDM is something we don't need, but anyways, let's uh, do this. Let's go with not fonts emoji and we want it to go with the uh, desktop portal GNOME, I guess. And this will install a lot of other things on our system and once it's done I will be back with you. Alright, so now that we installed all the packages we wanted to, we got these icons on the desktop which is nice I guess and uh, there are still uh, no icons for these groups but at least now we have all these applications that the GNOME group contains and of course you could go ahead and install the GNOME Extras 2, which we discussed in the previous episode when we looked at GNOME. So this is kind of the GNOME flashback, and uh, well, the most important thing is that finally my settings uh, window opens with the multitasking open here, and um, well, this is not actually where I can set up the panels. I just looked it up on the ArchWiki while things were installing, and I have to press Ctrl and no, Alt, and the right click on the panel. So you have to press down the Alt key and the right click to be able to work with this panel. And I guess uh, this is where you can kind of change your panel, the look of your panel, which is uh, <laughs> kind of weird. It's not following the theme. And uh, here you can control the applets that you have. And I guess, can we move uh, these around. Is there any way to select one and uh, no, I don't, I'm not even able to um, resize this window. The only thing, there is some help for some of them. For most of them there is only the remove. And well, we could put these somewhere else. Could set it to hide automatically. Uh, expand, we can turn off expand so it turns into a, um, I guess, what is this, dock instead of being a bar. And this is the same on the bottom here, so alt right click. And we can add the new panel by the new panel thing, and then we can also delete the panel. Same way, and uh, we can add things to this panel, so... I wonder how can I add things, so because I just want to add this, uh, I don't know, battery charge monitor here, which will tell me that I am connected to the uh, network. How do I actually move this to somewhere else, to the right hand side? Can I do that? Well, apparently I cannot. So maybe let's remove this, let's try, if I click 
alt right click here no let's uh, try it somewhere here maybe here if i say add to panel no it still goes to the left hand side instead of the right but i mean right hand right click i can go to preferences so at least you can uh, customize these and you can alt right click to remove from panel so you don't have to go to the properties to do that i would think that this would probably work with the regular gnome 2 but um, honestly i have not tried it in that one so everything else it looks to me that is the same as for gnome except that we don't have the activities overview and we have the two panel by default one on the top one on the bottom and i don't really think there is much more i should talk about this uh, gnome flashback it's an interesting project if you have some kind of nostalgic feeling for the old gnome layout i guess but maybe people who are nostalgic about the old gnome layout can tell me about whether this is uh, properly working in the way they would want this to work for them but in general so i find this a little lackluster in terms of uh, you know like uh, no icons here nothing to change even if i change the system to night mode this does not affect the panels things like that and uh, in general this i know that gnome is installed in a lot of other distributions a lot of operating systems use gnome as their default and they put in a lot of effort to make gnome somehow a little more like personalized or customized for their own distribution but we are now <laughs> discussing how these uh, desktop environments work on the Arch Linux and I kind of find that oh at least you can right click on the uh, here on the desktop and open a terminal or something that's that's nice I guess can we open a terminal yes yeah, so you can open a terminal in the uh, specific folder which is uh, nice but you have to oh what is this oh that's a new new window oh, I thought this will open a terminal what is this doing this adds new tab and this will create a new folder yeah all right so there is no terminal here on in the right click anyways so this is what we get on our Linux and if you want to customize it for yourself I, it seems to me that for gnome you have to put it in put in a lot more effort to customize your own desktop experience than in a lot of other desktop or a lot of other desktop environments i would say and um well i guess there are people who like Gnome and will set it up for them. And if you want me to do a little more deep dive style video on Gnome, I might, you know, do that. But in general, I am not interested in it for doing it by myself. But if there is, you know, there is interest in it, I will consider doing it. But for this series, I think I don't want to do all the difficult things that you might want to that you need to do to be able to customize gnome and you know if you have a very simple way to do that you can leave it down in the comments maybe i will do an extension video on this uh, at the end of the series or something before we compare all the desktop environments it would be nice if someone who is really familiar with gnome would tell me a few more things about it but anyways this is going to be the end of this video so thank you for watching you can like this video give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it you can subscribe for more content but more importantly follow me on mastodon where i generally post about the things i'm doing and i also post new videos there and we can get into discussions about various topics on Mastodon. So hope to see you there and if not there in the next video. Bye bye.